All right, hey, Hades Mega here, shoot another Prius video. Uh, so my Prius just recently hit 210,000 miles. I actually wanted to do this sooner, but I'm just lazy, you know. But uh, last year I bought some brake pads for my Toyota Prius, and we're gonna go and change them. Uh, so one one of the things you don't do very often on a on a hybrid car or Prius in general is uh, change the brake pads because the brake pads last a long time. I'm pretty sure. The, the, these are the stock brakes. These are the brakes that came with the car, and it's got 210,000 miles on it. So we're gonna go pull. We're gonna pull. I'm gonna show you how to inspect them, uh, and then we're gonna pull them out and then replace them. Okay. This video will focus on installing the brake pads. Okay. I got these brake pads on eBay for $45. They are the. It says Toyota Genuine Parts. I hope it's not some kind of counterfeit part, but it looks legit. Okay. You can you can probably just go down to your local Toyota dealer and get these. Or you can go to AutoZone or something and buy some aftermarket ones. I decided since the stock Toyota ones lasted so long, I'm going to go with stock Toyota OEM. You can't be, you know, can't go wrong with OEM is what I want to say, okay? So we'll take a, cl a closer look at this in a minute and then uh, then we'll go and install them. All right, guess we got. All right, yeah, so I just want to point out this is my 2006 Toyota Prius. It's a second gen Prius. This should work for um, for Priuses 2004 to 2009. They're pretty much the same. The, those are the second gen Prius models. Okay. All right. 210,000 miles on these pads. We'll see what they look like. Okay. Here's the trunk of my Prius and I've got here uh, the manual. So we'll kind of go through the manual how to do this. I pretty much, you know, it's, I think it's pretty much like you would replace the brake pads on any other car okay um, these are the brake pads that I purchased like I mentioned forty five dollars on eBay I you know it may be more maybe less you know you can get them at your local Toyota dealer also so there it is that's what the box looks like I will put uh, the, the part numbers if you guys want in the description below I've got a 306-52-C4 and then I got a 04465-AZ110 here, front brake pad, okay? It looks like they were manufactured in 11620, all right? So these pads are about a year old already. Um, all right, and there's another sticker right there. It's his pad kit disc brake. And there's a number 04465-AZ110. Quantity one, Toyota Motor Corporation, made in Japan. Toyota Genuine Parts, Lexus Genuine Parts. Okay, yep, that's the good stuff, man. OEM, can't beat that. Um, well, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, also I've got a brake caliper grease. Okay, synthetic brake caliper grease, and I've got a uh, a C clamp. Okay, so the in the in the manual it says to use a C clamp, so that's what we'll be. All right, and this is just going to be the front brakes. I, I I seriously doubt the rear brakes need to be replaced on this car. <laughs> All right, is big up. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get take your wheels off. Obviously, you can't you got to take the wheels off to get to the brakes. So just uh, um, jack your car up and put some jack stands under it. Take the wheels off. Um, what I'm going to opt to do is to jack it up with the big jack here in the front. I'm going to put some. Uh, some uh, some jack stands where the jacking points are on the side of the car and then I'm just gonna leave the jack there okay and then we'll take the wheels off all right Okay, there you go. That's what we're working with. This is the brake caliper right here. So I'm gonna show you how you can inspect the brake pad uh, without having to take the caliper apart. All right, one really easy way to do is to just take a peep right behind here. You can probably do it if you have a, the kind of wheel. So, so there you go. Okay, I've turned the camera brightness up a lot, but here you can see the leftover pad. Okay, so this is your brake. This is the brake, um, the backing for the brake pad. And then the actual brake pad is this part right here touching the so there's there's quite a bit of pad left okay but 
it's misleading, okay? You really gotta check both pads, because if I look at the back pad, I bet you it's it's pretty low, all right? It's lower okay, than Okay, so the best thing to do is turn the wheel in the direction of the, the brake pad that you want to inspect, all right? So I'm gonna turn, this is the left brake caliper, and I'm gonna turn the wheel to the right, all right? So, so this is, this is all going to be pointing out this way. Then it'll that. be easier to inspect. I'm just going to turn the wheel to the right. I'm surprised it doesn't have a steering lock. <laughs> you can just turn the wheels on the Prius anytime you want. Okay. All right, that's quite easy to do when the wheels are up in the air like this. Okay, and then you're going to kind of want to look okay. in here. So there's a little peep window in here that you can take a look at it if you're going to inspect the rear pad, okay? You can't really see the outer pad but it's really like I, like I showed you earlier inspecting the outer pad is really easy you just kind of look behind the, the brake bracket okay but you gotta look in here and it'll you can see how much pad you got left and I don't okay. got a lot of there we go you. so you can see mm, that's got about well when I take them off we'll measure them but that's got about like two millimeters of pad left is that could you still drive around with that yeah you probably could probably maybe another year or so but i'm gonna replace them now okay um so as you can see the difference between the inner pad and the outer pad is a lot so it's very misleading if you just look at one of them okay okay yeah there's the pad again all right so about a good five six millimeters i'll actually take a I'll, we'll take a caliper out and we'll go measure them all right. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and replace the pads on this, okay? You can see the outer pad has a lot more meat than the inner pad, but, and, and like I said, you could probably drive it like this for a while, but I'm gonna just replace it now, okay, since I already got the pads. All right, here's we go. All right, Hayes Mig here. I got the Haynes repair manual for a 2011 to 2012 Prius. Okay, that's like covers one, two, three generation Prius. Um, so we're just gonna go here through this step by step. Remove the cap from the brake fluid reservoir. Okay, okay I've already Let's go ahead and do that. Open the hood, or pop the hood. Just open it and then put the hood latch down. Without trying to, without scratching the stuff inside your engine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, the brake fluid reservoir is right here. One thing you probably might want to do is wipe this, wipe any kind of dirt around here clean before you open it. You don't want to get any dirt in there. And and also note the level of the fluid here. Um, so right here, it's about, eh, I'd say two, two, three millimeters below max. Well, when we push those pads in, it's going to push that fluid all the way back up here, okay? Right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clean the, the brake fluid reservoir. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna clean it with is some uh, napkins and just like a spray, just water, okay? I'm just gonna spray it down with water. Just make sure you dry it really well before you open it, okay? <laughs> you don't wanna get any water, you don't wanna get anything in there, no foreign stuff in there. I'm using these subway napkins. <laughs> Okay, now that the reservoir is nice and clean, I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes and then we'll go open it up. Uh, in the meantime, let's go see what else there is to do. So it says loosen the wheel lug nuts, raise the front of the vehicle and support it securely on jack stands, lock the wheels at the rear end, okay? So I've already done that. The, the car has a uh, wheel chock in the back to keep it from rolling forward, okay? I've got two jack stands supporting the vehicle and a jack support uh, jack on the, the front cross member keep it up okay all right okay it's been a few minutes we're gonna go open the brake fluid reservoir okay it says remove the cap but I will just kind of just just open it and just lightly put it back on okay um, the reason they tell you to take the cap off is to like um, we're gonna push the pistons in and it's gonna force the fluid back up so it's gonna need a place for all that pressure to go through okay so it helps equalize the pressure okay right. step three is remove the wheels 
Work on one brake assembly at a time using the assembled brake for reference if necessary. The wheels are removed. All right. Okay, section four. Uh, inspect the brake disc carefully as outlined in section three. If machining is necessary, we're not going to do that. We're just going to change the pads, okay? Um, if you're if you're working on the front brake, push the piston back into its bore to provide room room for the new brake pads. A C clamp can be used for this. All right, so right there, okay? And then as the piston is depressed to the bottom of the caliper, the fluid in the master cylinder will rise. Make sure it doesn't overflow. I, I don't think it will. Um, for the front brake replacement, follow the accompanying photo beginning with illustration 2.6.a. Okay, so here. Always wash the brakes with brake cleaner before disassembling anything. I, whatever, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, you guys can do that if you want. Make sure you use a, a brake fluid, a brake parts cleaner, okay? Um, be sure to stay in order and read the caption under each illustration. Alright. So before removing the caliper, be sure to depress the piston into its bore with a large C-clamp to make room for the new thicker pads, okay? So uh, before that, let's go take the brake pads out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open these brake pads since we will be replacing them very soon, okay? Hades Mega has not, has inspected the brake pads and they look like they will be needing replacement within a year is what I'm going to say. Okay. There's the brand new brake pads. There's one. There's two. That's a pair right there. There's a, uh, a brake, uh, a brake, a low brake indicator dealy here. So when, yeah, when you get pretty low, it's going to start rubbing on the, on the, on the brake rotor. So, um, if, uh, you don't want that to happen, because then you'll have to resurface your rotor. <laughs> All right. So there you go. So there's another pair right there. Toyota. Good stuff. Okay. That's what the pads look like. All right, nice. It's the good stuff, man. Okay. All right, so let's go take the old pads out. Okay, Hazen Mega's gonna go over here, uh, go over um, checking the uh, disc brakes to see if they are, uh, uh, if they meet the standard thickness, okay? Or um, if they get too thin, then you should replace them, but I, they look fine to me, so. <laughs> All right, so I have a 2006 Toyota Prius, so 2009 and earlier models it says here okay uh, I'll put a subtitle below so you guys can see um, it's a 0 0.866 inches the minimum is 0 0.787 inches so if it's less than 787 inches 0.787 inch, inches um, you should replace it okay so I'm gonna go check that with this guy okay okay comment. this is pretty simple to do I have a one inch micrometer here. I'm surprised they still just use inches. Okay, and you want to get it all the way in there as much as you can. Okay, and then you're going to want to read it. I don't have one of those fancy electric ones or digital ones. I can't, I can't freaking read it. Oh, there we go. So probably somewhere somewhere in the middle is where you're going to want to get it, okay? And I'm just going to read it off to you guys. 0.86 inches. 0.86 inches is what I got, okay? Okay. 2009 and earlier models, 0.86 inches is the standard. Holy moly. It, yeah, okay? So if it was lower than 0.7867, it, it didn't wear down at all, guys. <laughs> it's like at six, six hundredths. Yeah, six hundredths of an inch more down, okay, is what I'm going to say. I, and I don't even know if I was reading that properly, but I did, did say eight and six. So, um, 0.86 inches is what I got, all right? So, so those rotors are still good. So, we do not need to replace the rotors. I'm not even going to resurface them. Uh, I may clean them a little bit before we put the new pads on, but it, you, just, you don't really have to. Okay, okay. so just okay. like in the book, I have a six inch caliper just like that, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put it back here and open it up all the way. All right. And 
I guess you're going to have to put it on the bolt because there's really nowhere else to put it on. There's a bolt in the back there. Okay. So what this is going to do is going to push on the caliper. Pushes on the pad, but it pushes on the caliper and it pushes it inward. Okay. There we go. See it moving. Alternatively, you could probably swing the caliper up and push it, push the piston in it's by itself, okay? But this is the way the book tells you how to do it. So that's what we're It's kind of annoying because I'm right-handed and I have to do it with my left. <laughs> okay, you're probably gonna wanna push it in as far as it'll go. And there's no way to tell, there's no way you can really tell. It's pushed in all the way shouldn't have to be a lot of pressure to do it okay there we go okay pretty loose now yeah you can see the count the piston retracted quite a bit we're gonna go remove the caliper okay that step is done now we've got to go remove the okay piece. according to the book it says Remove the lower, uh, the caliper lower mounting bolt. I don't know why they have two wrenches. Hold the caliper pin with an open end while unscrewing the bolt. Hmm, that's an interesting design. I don't think I've ever worked with one of those before. <laughs> ah, I see what they're talking about. Okay, here we go. I'm not gonna lie. I could not find the right wrench. <laughs> the so this uh this little nut here is like really small. Okay. Okay. I, I don't even, okay. And then it says to swing the caliper upward and then hang it up with a, a wire, okay, a piece of wire. So I got this piece of wire here. So I'm gonna swing it up. Okay, I'm gonna swing the caliper up. Put my piece of wire in the, in the hole here. Okay, and then I'm gonna hang it on the, uh, the coil the spring, the coil spring. Oh, it's raining a little bit. Okay, that way it doesn't swing downward, okay? And there is, there's our piston, and as you can see, it's been pushed in quite a bit. Excellent, all right? Then all you gotta do to take the pads out are just kind of peel them off. All right. Also, take note which pad is what, okay? Um, and how they're assembled. So when you put them back together, it's good, okay? Okay, so the one with the little tab, the indicator tab, ooh, it's, yeah, that's really close. <laughs> it's really close to almost done. Um, is for whatever reason, the Prius wears the back pad more than the front pad. It, it's such a waste. There's so much extra pad on this one, you know? But yeah, there it is, okay? So the back one has the indicator on it. Just remember that. All right, let's go take this to where the other pads are and we'll go assemble it. Okay, and then just make sure you leave everything here. It says, do not, um, it says do not blow, <laughs> I know I just blew on it, but do not blow the, any of the brake dust around and you should be wearing a mask when you do this. Just, just don't, just try not to blow it all over the place, you know? If you see some in there, just give it a little blow and it'll come off, okay? So anyway, here's the pads. Let's go check them out, compare them to the new ones. Okay, so make sure you wear gloves when you do this. It's pretty disgusting. You, they, that stuff is not good for you, okay? Try not to get your hands too dirty. Yeah. <laughs> um, remove the inner pad and the outer pad. So Hades and kind of jumped ahead and did that already. So you just saw how I just kind of just peeled it off of there, okay? It says lift out the spring, the support springs. Don't do that. Just leave them there because um, we're going to put new pads right after. Um, after cleaning, lubricate the caliper pin with brake grease, then reinstall. Okay. You know what's interesting? This is a this is a green pad. This is a green pad. I don't think this is the stock pad. Oh no, it is. It's green though. I hope this is the right pad. It looks the same. 
Okay, okay, so it does. It tells you to pull the caliper pins out, and to ins um, uh, what I want to do is just inspect it. If the grease looks fine in there, I'm not going to do anything. So what you're going to want to do is take a look at all these little boots and stuff, the booties here. All right, and then you're going to want to take this part out. All right. Try to keep the dirt out. Okay. The grease looks fine to me, man. I don't see any problem with it. If it still slides smoothly and if there's still grease in there, it's fine, okay? What I might do is add a little bit extra is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's dirty or anything. But you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the, um, the grease that's in there, okay? So I'm just gonna, basically I'm just gonna wipe this clean and then grease it up and then stick it in there, okay? I'm not, I'm not gonna clean. Uh, really what you want to do is get in here and take all the old grease out and then put new grease in. But all I'm going to do is just clean this grease up and put new grease, okay? Alright, how am I going to do that? Napkin. <laughs> the same napkin I used to clean the brake res reservoir. I'm going to wipe off the old grease, which still looks like it's in good shape. Okay. It's in excellent condition, but that's good. We want. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've cleaned the caliper pin. Now I'm going to go grease it. Make sure you use a grease for calipers. That might be too much. If there's excess, it'll just squirt out of there, okay? Okay, and then you wanna make sure that you put the boot back in, okay? Just like that. Should be good, and then just wipe out the excess grease. Maybe you wanna work it in there a little bit. Yeah, push it in there, and then see if any grease squirts out of there, because then you put too much, okay? And then just wipe the excess off. Okay. All right, that should be good. Uh, now we got to do the top one. <laughs> um, so the top one is the same thing, except you have to pull the whole uh, you know what? Okay, never mind. Let's try this. Let's try not even taking the caliper out. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is just pull, pull, undo the boot here, pull the whole pin out. Okay, <laughs> this is gonna do it like that, okay? That'll save us from having to take the other um, bolt out. All right, and we're just gonna wipe that grease out there. I'm surprised at how little grease there is in here. That I'm sure that's the same grease that they, they put from the factory, okay? All right, nice and clean. And we'll go goop it up. Okay, stick it back in there. Move the boots over the pin. There you go. I'm gonna wipe. The, push it in, move it in and out. Okay. Now there's like a kind of vacuum in there. It's okay to leave a little bit of grease on there, but just try to get off the excess grease, okay? The grease actually kind of protects it a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna put our little wire back so this doesn't fall down. Okay, there we go. So the, the calipers are greased. Good job. <laughs> okay, so the next step is coat the backs of the new pads with a thin layer of bright grease. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I got our new pads right here. All right. He's big is actually really excited to do this because I, I rarely, I haven't been really using this bright greaser. <laughs> okay, so put a thin layer of bright grease on this, okay? On the backing. Not the, not the pad part, the backing. 
Definitely don't want to get this on the pads. Okay. You can get some in this little holes right here. Okay. Just paint on a light layer. Okay, that one's done. Go ahead and do the other one. Okay, this is the front pad or the outer pad. Okay. Okay, so you don't mix these up. Take them out one at a time, okay? So the one, the first one that we're gonna do all right, so the first, the next step is clean the shims and install them on the new pads. So basically, the the metal parts, the metal backings that are on these uh, um, pads. All right, so we're gonna take them out. I know I'm supposed to be wearing gloves. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so just don't mix them up. Okay, so the if you remember correctly, so this is the the outer pad. All right, this is the you know the outer pad, the one that goes on the outside. So take all these clips out. So remember the the one with the the holes in it. Okay, these cutouts are as on the inside, all right? And, and I'm I'm just going to spray this with some brake parts cleaner. Okay. Off all that old brake dust. Might want to give it a good wipe. I'm gonna give them one more spray. Okay. And we'll let the, uh, the brake pads. I, mean, I was only be able, really only able to get one of them, basically. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that was the outer pad. I'm gonna go grab the ones from the inner pad. Okay, the inner pad only has one. No, it does, it does have two. Same dealy. All right. So while that one is drying, we'll be cleaning this one. And they are, they do look a little bit different. Okay, you can definitely tell this is the outer one because it has the marks from the piston on it. <laughs> okay, that's how you know which one is which. And this has the marks from the brake pads on it. so cold okay now they're all nice and clean uh, so we're gonna go install the ooh, which one was it the outer pads okay these are the outer pads all right so if you remember correctly this is the one that goes on the inside and then this is the one that goes on the outside okay just like that And like I, if if you didn't super duper clean it, you can still sell it. You can tell this is the this is the part that goes on the outside, okay? Because this is the opening, the little opening for the for the window. Okay, okay we're gonna go install our clean the um, shims onto the pad. So if you remember correctly, this is the outer pad right here. All right, and the 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 one the part on the inside has these little holes in it. All right, so just put it on. Just like so. Wow, it doesn't quite fit. Oh, these are the right pads, man. Let's put, let's put this one first. Okay. okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install this, uh, the the inner pad shims. So how I know which side is which is there's an imprint, see here with the two holes, that match up with the two holes on the pad right here, okay? 
So I'm going to go put that one on first. All right. kind of weird it's kind of like it's backwards or something okay I guess the other one just kind of holds it in place all right and this one goes like this okay I can't help but think the new pads are a little thicker all right, that should hold it all in place. Good to go. So now we're gonna go reinstall. Okay, I'm just gonna go over the next couple steps. Basically, pretty much just put them back, okay? It's just put the, the support springs back in, but we didn't even take them out, okay? Um, make sure that the pad surfaces are perfectly clean before installing the inner pad and the outer pad, okay? And then it says to compress the piston to the bottom of his bore with the large C-clamp. Okay, if we have to do that, we'll do that. All right, and then swing the caliper back down into place. So now we go do that. Okay, there's our freshly greased uh, calipers, caliper pin calipers. So I'm going to go install the rear pad first. It doesn't matter, you can install it any way. All right, just put them in the, the same way you took them out. Okay, just going to slide them in. Try not to get the grease on the front of the brake pads. Okay, the brake, the, you know, the brake pad part. Okay, push that all the way in. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install this one. Pretty simple. It should be, it, everything should be clean already. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then it's just to swing the caliper downward. If it doesn't go, if the, if it still hits the uh, the caliper, then that means uh, we got to push the piston. Okay. Wire off of here. Okay, we're gonna swing this bad boy downward, and if it hits the pad, oh wait wait wait, kind of no, no, it's fine. Move this so it's open. Okay, so yeah, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because the piston hits the uh, it hits the pad. So what we're gonna have to do is push that piston in. What was the, what was the point of doing it? <laughs> what was the point of doing it before? You know. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get our C clamp here. We're gonna press the piston. There's a little better angle right there. There's a little hole in there that you can get the. Uh, C clamp thing in there. Okay. okay. Push that piston in more. It's moving in quite easily. You might be able to just push it in there with your thumbs, but the best thing to do is use a C clamp. Okay. Push it in all the way. Oh, 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 oh. This, uh, this freaking boot. Okay, let's make sure this boot doesn't get in the way there, tuck it in, okay? Hopefully it goes in now, okay, let's see. Yes, yes it does. So you got to make sure you align it. Oh, this, this caliper, it floats there, okay, so you can move it in and out. Just align okay. it, so here we go. Just align it so it'll, it's between the caliper and the piston, boom, there you go, it's in. Now push, now it's hitting this one down here, just push the pin in, okay, until it clears. All right, there you go. And now, put your bolt back in. Okay, make sure you, make sure all these boots were back in when you, when you put them back, okay? And then, uh, yeah, that should be it. Um, and then just tighten this bolt. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, torque it. The spec is 25 foot-pounds. Okay, it's a 14 millimeter. Okay, 25 foot-pounds. Um, you might need to hold it with the wrench, I'm not sure. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just gonna double check the top one too. The other one is 25 foot pounds too. Okay, all right, that's it, we're done. Uh, so just do the same thing for the other side. I'm not gonna do a video for the other side, but uh, um, yeah, so uh, pretty much the tutorial part is over. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching. That is how you change your brake pads on your uh, second gen Toyota Prius 2004 to 2009. All right. Hope you guys learned something. Hopefully that was uh, informative for some people. Uh, this is the first time I've ever changed the brakes on a Prius, and uh, you, it's not something you would do very often. <laughs> to, to tell you the truth. Okay, that. guys. Just for reference, the inner the the inner pad on the left of my car. Uh, on the front left of my car is at two millimeters okay it's almost two millimeters i would say that's 2.1 millimeters so if you remember the minimum thickness was 2.3 so this one already had to be replaced it is almost it was literally almost touching the indicator already. there's almost no more pad on that left so definitely so so that just goes to show the pads don't wear evenly on these cars um the the right side still had a 0.7 left this one has like nothing left and and the outer pads still have plenty of meat on it so so that just goes to show that um you know just just replace them all <laughs> it, it wears kind of weirdly so so you got to inspect both sides and the inner parts okay the difference between the outer pad and the inner pad is a big difference so and this the the problem is the pad that's on the inside is the hardest to uh um is the hardest one to check so yeah so so just check it the way i showed you through the little indicator window okay so yeah there's a, there's a, there's just a little uh, tidbit there about my uh my break uh my break job um the the left side was more worn than the right side so it's a good thing i went and changed it now all right That's okay. okay hey it's here i just got done doing the uh the front left side now okay you saw me do the front right and then i just did the this one on my own um okay so the some final some final closing uh comments is uh after you're done with doing working on the brakes make sure you put this back <laughs> don't forget this okay um your brake fluid level should go up okay so right here we're like at the top of the max line um i if that's the way it was from the factory i'm just going to leave it like that okay um, i will be ma making a video on how to flush the brake system I'm probably not going to get to it today, so um, I think it's going to start raining. So, okay. Um, and then the last thing to do would be just put the wheels back on the car. Okay. Um, but before that, we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to pre-bed the rotors, uh, pre-bed the 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 pistons or the um, the brake pads. Okay. So there's probably uh, like it's probably really loose right now. So. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna step on the brakes and it's gonna push the pads out all right that's all we're gonna do so push on the brakes it should probably go down all the way or not because it's it's a brake by wire okay so that should that should uh should have pushed on the brake pads okay so and then what you're gonna want to do now is put the wheels back on torque it to 80 foot pounds and then Get your car off the stands and then take it for a test drive and make sure to listen for any kind of noises or anything okay all right so i will make the closing remarks video right now all right here's we go all right hey Zomega here and these are some kind of closing remarks for changing the brake pads on your second gen toyota prius so this is the first time i've ever done it um and i did it by the book okay so that's that's the way i did it for the most part um, these are some of the tools that i used um, definitely invest in a six inch um, c-clamp okay that's what that's what was in the book and that's what i had in my garage so that's what i use all right so you might be able to get away with using one of those plastic you know quick ones but you know this this one did pretty good okay um, you're gonna need a torque wrench to put it put your wheels back obviously and then you're gonna need a torque I use two torque wrenches okay this is the one I'm using for the wheels and this is the one I'm using for uh, this is, it's a torque adapter is what it is to put the caliper bolt back okay um, to take the caliper bolt out I use a 14 millimeter um, combination wrench all right I, I don't think you really needed to use the, uh, the open-ended wrench it's just to use it but it's like I, I didn't use it the second time so. <laughs> Um, I used a couple measuring devices to make sure that everything was still in spec and still serviceable. 
um, I used a micrometer and a caliper for the I used a caliper to measure the thickness of the pads you can kind of just look at it and see if you know how much it's got left um, or or compare it to where the wear indicator is if you're getting close to the wear indicator you probably should replace it okay the what's the one on the inner pad okay and then the micrometer to check the uh, the rotor thickness okay the rotor thickness was fine okay I use some brake parts cleaner to clean the shims okay or to clean out whatever brake parts you need uh, you can get this at your local AutoZone um, and I use a synthetic CRC synthetic brake and caliper grease okay I have a big bottle of it and so whenever I do brake jobs and stuff this is what I use okay I use this to to grease or lubricate the caliper pins and the backings for the brake pads okay and then I just got a uh, oh and just a good old impact gun to take the wheels on okay you can probably use this to take the caliper bolt out too okay and a wire to hold the uh, the brake caliper up okay so it doesn't flop forward uh, I, on the right side I didn't have a problem with it flopping forward but on the left side it kind of did okay um, and that's it that's pretty much all the tools that I used um, I would say if you are not comfortable working taking the wheels off and getting the car up in the air um, or you know turning a wrench then this is probably not a job for you <laughs> that's all I say but if you're pretty handy with the wrench and you you know you you can take the wheels off and on and and you know turn bolts and stuff then this is a pretty easy job okay um, if you're if you knew if you knew what you're doing and you weren't shooting video <laughs> okay well, I, you could probably do it within an hour okay you probably, it's probably pretty easy if you did I did this other side I would say it took me maybe 15 20 minutes yeah and then just to put everything back is probably you know it, it would take about an hour if you knew what you were doing okay so it's not that hard a job the brake pads cost $45 and I had the rest of the tools so not not hard not a hard job at all okay um, and it's not something you would do very often on this car that's for sure <laughs> so I say good old Toyota Prius man I'm telling you okay but yeah make sure you put the cap back on the the reservoir okay um, and and it's a good idea to bed the the, cal the, the brake pads before you uh, before you actually drive the car. So, and that's all. You just step on the brake the brake pedal, and then that should it should adjust the pads to where they should be. Okay. Hope you learned something. Uh, that is how to change the brake pads on your uh, second gen Toyota Prius. That's a 2004 to 2009. Um, yeah, I hope I hope it was educational and you learned something. Right, thanks for watching.